lesson 1-3, exploring real numbers. Natural numbers are counting numbers, 1, 2, 3. When you count, you usually start with 1. Whole numbers are your counting numbers and zero. So the only difference between whole numbers and counting numbers is now you're adding the number zero. Zero, one, two, three. There are no negative numbers here. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, etc. Rational numbers are any number that can be written as a fraction of integers, including repeating and terminating decimals. The fraction of integers thing is a little confusing for people. All that means is it has to be written as a fraction of a whole number over another whole number. For example, two-thirds. Two-thirds can be written as a decimal, 0.6 repeating, which is why repeating decimals also can be rational numbers, because 0.6 can be translated back to two-thirds. Terminating decimals are decimals that end, like 1.6. 1 1.6 1 is 1 and 6 tenths. If we change that to an improper fraction, it becomes 16 tenths, which makes it a rational number because it's written as a fraction of integers. Any whole number is also a rational number because 6 can be written as 6 over 1, which is a fraction of integers. An irrational number is any number that cannot be written as a fraction of integers. The most famous irrational number is pi. They've been trying to compute all the digits of pi for a very long time. They've gotten more than a million digits. None of them have repeated and it has never ended. Many people confuse pi and think it is 3.14, but that's the decimal approximation for pi. Other numbers that are irrational, square roots of non-perfect squares, like the square root of 2, or the square root of 3, or the square root of 11. Any number that is a non-terminating or non-repeating decimal, or in other words, a decimal that does not repeat in a specific pattern like 12.62187, and then they add the little dots. Little dots tell you that the number is continuing on with no discernible pattern. Real numbers are rational and irrational numbers. So any rational number and any irrational number is also a real number. A counterexample is an example that proves the statement false. If I said all flowers are roses, I could come up with a counterexample as long as I knew that there was, I could list one flower that was not a rose. A counterexample to this is like a daisy, because a daisy is a flower, but it is not a rose. An inequality is a mathematical sentence that compares the value of two expressions using an inequality symbol. Greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero on the number line, but in opposite directions. The opposite of six is negative six. They are opposites. Absolute value is the physical distance a number is from zero on the number line. Physical distance can never be negative. You can't travel a negative six miles. You can travel six miles in the wrong direction, but you still traveled six positive miles just in the wrong direction. Therefore, if I was trying to tell someone that they needed to start at zero and go to negative 10, they actually took 10 physical steps just in the negative direction. I take this just as I could take 10 physical steps in the positive direction if I move from zero to 10. Meaning that absolute value is always positive. The symbol for absolute value are two vertical lines. For example, if I put the number negative 3 inside my two vertical lines, I'm saying the absolute value of negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. The absolute value of 6 is 6. Don't get confused and make these opposites. This one looks like it's the opposite, but it really isn't. The only time you'll see absolute value being negative is when the negative sign is outside the absolute value symbol. For example, this actually says the opposite of. So in this particular number, it is saying the opposite of the absolute value of negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5, but the opposite of that is negative 5. This is the only instance where you will see absolute value be negative. Exploring real numbers. An interesting little chart here that I have 
is that real numbers can be classified as either rational or irrational. If a number is rational, it is also real. My locket is really fast. So if I have an, a rational number, all rational numbers are also real numbers. All integers are also rational numbers, all whole numbers are also integers, and all natural numbers are also whole numbers. So once you've identified the most specific a number is, you're just going to go up the chart to figure out where things are. An example of this, let's take a look. If we're going to name the set of numbers to which each of these numbers belongs, negative 12. I know that's not a counting number. I know it's not a whole number, but it is an integer because it's a negative number. So if it starts here in integers, I just list everything from integers up the chart. So it is an integer. It is a rational number. And it is a real number. If I use 5 twelfths, the same thing happens. 5 twelfths is not an integer, but 5 twelfths is a rational number because it is a fraction of integers. So I would start here at rational numbers and move up the chart so that I would go rational number and real number. Zero. Well, Zero is not a counting number, but it is a whole number. So I'm going to go up the chart from whole number all the way back up to real number. So this is a whole number. It's an integer. It's a rational number. And it's a real number. If we have to order numbers from least to greatest or greatest to least, it's pretty easy if they're both negative and positive. We can put them on a number line and compare them. If they're all negative, like all these numbers are, then we need to make sure that we compare their numerators. However, we can't compare their numerators until we have a common denominator. So we need a common denominator here. I'm going to look at these numbers. I know that 4 will divide into 12, and I know 4 will divide into 8. So I'm going to key off the number 12. If I multiply 12 times 2, I get 24. I know 4 divides into 24, and I know 8 divides into 24, so I know my common denominator must be 24. So if I look at negative 3 fourths, and I transfer that to 20 fourths, I know that in order to get 4 to 24, I have to multiply it by 6. So if I multiply negative 3 by 6, I get negative 18. If I then look at negative 7 twelfths, to get to 24, I have to multiply 12 by 2. So if I multiply 7 by 2, I'm going to get negative 14. And last but not least, if I look at negative 5 eighths, to get 8 to 24, I have to multiply it by 3. So negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Now I simply look at my numerators. I have negative 18, I have negative 14, and I have negative 15. If we think of a number line, the number that that's the furthest to the left is so the number that's furthest to the left on the number line is negative 18. So this is the smallest number. This is the second smallest number, and this is the biggest number. When we number them, when we put them in order, we have to put them back in their original form. So if we're going to move on from smallest to biggest, my smallest number is negative 3 fourths. My number in the middle is negative 5 eighths. And the number that is the largest is negative 7 twelfths. Always put them back in their original form. Let's look at some absolute value problems here. The absolute value of negative 2.5, since absolute value must be positive, we're just going to say 2.5. Number 2 here says the opposite of the absolute value of 3. The absolute value of 3 is 3. The opposite of that is negative 3. The absolute value of 367 is 367. The absolute value of the opposite of negative 90 means we work from the inside out. The absolute value of negative 90 is positive 90. But the opposite of that, remember that, a negative sign can also mean opposite of is negative 90. Absolute value is fairly simple to do. 